As someone who spends a lot of time in Eastern Europe, I pay particular attention to offers of residence and citizenship in the Balkan region and in Eastern Europe in general. And today, I'm going to explain what I call the Balkan citizenship myth. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best more at nomadcapitalist.com. So what is the Balkan citizenship myth? Let me start by talking to you about what I've been seeing over the years, what I've been hearing over the years. I am, as you know, uh, the goody two shoes of the business. I have worn that attack as a badge because I believe it's the correct thing to do. And when it comes to passports, you do not want to get citizenship through some weird nefarious means where there's cash in an envelope and some guy at the passport office prints out some passport that's ble- You don't want to get involved in that. Uh, years ago, I heard about a deal in uh, Bulgaria. Not the current deal, not the proper deal, but some weird back alley deal. I've heard about uh, Romanian citizenship being maintained by people in Moldova, people going there, all kinds of scammy stuff all around this region. I saw someone recently talking about a citizenship program in Bosnia uh, that doesn't really exist. And then you see just this kind of garden variety talk about people who are selling what are residence permits and they're calling it citizenship as if it'll magically lead to citizenship. I also think that people are kind of inflating the value of some of these passports in a, an odd way. I'm going to talk about all of that because I am a fan of the Balkan region here in southeastern Europe. Uh, and I've talked about residence opportunities. It is relatively easy to get a residence permit in Serbia, in Montenegro. Maybe harder to keep that one if you don't live there. Uh, Albania has an option. Generally, I mean, depending on which option you're setting up, you may need to spend a little bit of time there, up to six months a year. And in the case of Montenegro, probably a pretty substantial amount of time per year as long as their citizenship program continues. Um, so most of these countries have some kind of option. You can buy real estate, you can start a company, maybe you pay a little bit of salary taxes for, for yourself as a director, and you can get residence. These generally do not lead to citizenship very easily. So if you look at you know, Montenegro, for example, how does Montenegro work? You can get a one-year residence permit. You can kind of work towards permanent residence. And you may not even be able to renew that residence permit because they have really been looking for people to spend 10 or 11 months per year there recently. It used to be that way. It used to be, hey, you own a property, here's your residence, you know, see you next year. Uh, now, I think because perhaps they wanted to push people into citizenship, uh, the Citizenship by Investment Program, which, which just got extended for an extra year until the end of 2022, they tightened it up. I don't know many Montenegrins who spend 10 or 11 months in Montenegro. They're in Belgrade in the winter. They're traveling around. they got places to be. So that was kind of a high bar to renew a residence. Now, the good news is if you own a property there, you can kind of come and go. I don't think that the tourist visa policies are very difficult uh, for most people. Uh, but, you know, what's generally going to happen in that situation is, you know, eventually it's going to be, oh, he's up for permanent residence uh, in, in a year from now. Ah, uh, oh, you didn't fill out the form. Sorry, your residence is canceled, but don't worry, you can start over and apply again for the one year. But you just lost all the time. Um, and so you see a lot of that. You know, I've talked about how I think it's probably difficult, not, not part of the Balkans, but Greece nearby. If you're not ethnically Greek, probably have a more to- difficult time naturalizing. That is uh, kind of the word in the street. Um, Bulgaria, if you're just to move to Bulgaria, perhaps a more difficult time. If you follow the investment options, you're hiring people, you're investing, then that's more of a standardized process. And so uh, citizenship is always harder to come by. Now, let's ask, why would you want an Eastern European citizenship? You might be asking yourself that because the countries we're talking about Romania and Bulgaria are part of the European Union. You can use that to go live in Switzerland, live in anywhere you want in the EU. But the rest of the countries that are often talked about in our space, uh, the Bosnias, the Serbias, the Montenegros, the Albanias, North Macedonia, these are countries that are not part of the EU, which brings up my first kind of issue, this Balkan citizenship myth, that people who are offering these programs are often overplaying the likelihood of these countries' entrance into or ascendance to the European Union. Uh, a lot of people who've positioned or who've sold Montenegrin citizenship by investment were pitching it as, hey, by 2025, they'll be in the EU. Now, I've, I think, become relatively successful in business over the years, numerous businesses, by always underplaying my hand. And if Montenegro were to ascend to the EU, quite frankly, it would make it less interesting for me. You'd have more restrictions. I don't know that it would make the country substantially better. Um, but maybe you think it's a benefit. Uh, 
I don't know of any particular evidence that that's going to happen. I mean, they're certainly on a track to do so. Serbia is on a track to do so. And when you look at the Serbian president and he's asked about, you know, which direction are you going to go? It's like, ah, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, you know, we're working towards this EU thing. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people aren't very serious about it. And so I think that there's a lot of BS out there. I heard someone the other day saying, like, you know, um, uh, Albania is on track. I don't know that Albania is really that far along in their, in their quest. Even if they've accomplished a number of the milestones, some of the most difficult ones may be ahead. Bosnia, I don't even know if they're really on a track. Um, so that's often overlooked. And so if you don't want to be part of the EU, then hey, that doesn't matter to you. If you do, if you are buying into this EU, hey, join the EU, then I guess it's a... Uh, you know, you should be aware of that. If you don't want to be in the EU, for me, that's the benefit of some of these Balkan passports is it's relatively open, it's relatively free, they leave you alone, you have kind of a European lifestyle more so than you might in maybe a, in a part of the Caucasus or somewhere else. I mean, you still have kind of that adjacency to Europe uh, without a lot of the nonsense, without as many regulations. And so that can be a very positive thing for someone who wants a lot of the European benefits with a lot of the European nonsense. You know, how do you go about getting a Balkan citizenship? Because it is more difficult. It is, in many ways, the best of both worlds. By the way, Serbia and Bosnia, visa-free access to Europe, Russia and China, not a lot of passports that offer that. Um, they're not able to go to the UK and Ireland, but you know, the Schengen area in Europe, they can go. So they have very unique passports. The Serbian passport, we've talked about it for a couple of years, one of the most um, fastest growing passports in the world in terms of growth. It's an excellent travel document. And now you have Bosnia kind of catching up. Montenegro uh, has some benefits that mostly are reserved for EU citizens like e-visa to Saudi Arabia. Um, and so how do you get it? Well, first of all, look at your family tree. Um, Citizenship by descent is possible. We've done a couple of different cases for uh, Croatian, just help someone get Croatian citizenship recently. So that's the EU Balkans as well. Um, so, you know, if you are from the region, if you have family from the region, parents, grandparents, that could work. Serbian, we've helped people get Serbian. Um, Albanian, help people get Albanian. Uh, Bulgarian, help people get Bulgarian. Uh, and have someone right now in the process for Romania and we are scrounging through a local village looking for documents. So check your family tree. There may be an opportunity. Obviously, some of the borders have shifted. Uh, you could possibly claim citizenship by descent, and it could cost you not a lot of money. You can also look at the citizenship by investment programs. Both of them are a little expensive compared to other citizenship by investment programs. Montenegro is the widely discussed one. It's now 200,000 euros in fees. They doubled it up, plus an investment of 450,000 euros in the coast. You're not going to get a lot because it is like the Caribbean real estate programs approved real estate and you're going to have to buy something that is uh, expensive. Maybe very nice, maybe in a yacht club, whatever, but you're not going to get nearly as much as you're probably expecting. North Macedonia has a program. We've been talking to them and now this program is a bit more formalized, but we've been talking to people there for, for many years and they never really seem to know what the deal is, but call it 200,000 euros and call it you're not going to see that money again. Um, so those are programs. Albania talked about one, and to speak of their path to the EU, the EU promptly said, if you do it, forget it. And the EU has even dangled the carrot of, you know what, maybe you can't even visit anymore, but certainly you're not going to join our ranks if we know you sold passports. Bulgaria, again, part of the EU, has a quasi-citizenship by investment program that's currently being discussed. They may make some changes to it. Um, and requires an investment, takes a little bit longer. It's not a six month process, it's gonna be a closer to two year process. So you have options where you can make an investment and you can get that passport in your hands. Uh, other than that, the second part of the Balkan citizenship myth is not just that these countries are all, you know, knocking on the door of the EU ready to join tomorrow the minute you get your passport, uh, but also that, you know, there are some passports out there, at least in a legitimate way, for, you know, just a couple bucks. I have seen people throughout the years talk about citizenship in, um, in Eastern Europe in general. Uh, before they had a citizenship by investment program which came and went, Moldova, uh, Ukraine, um, Serbia, Albania, Bosnia now. Now, if you were to come and do something exceptional, Steven Seagal, for example, citizen of Serbia, you know, partially he benefits from being Steven Seagal, but his idea was, listen, I'm going to open a business in Serbia. I'm going to you know, bring some prestige to the country. If you're in that kind of position, perhaps you can get citizenships in some of these countries. They have some of those provisions. Is the average person who's watching this going to be able to do that? No. And so if you're seeing something about some country in this part of the world, 
offering you citizenship where it's 5,000 dollars, 10,000 euros, whatever, anything close to that, it's probably something that you want to stay away from. Or as I said, it perhaps may be a residence program and they're going to tell you, oh, don't worry. Uh, listen, can you become a citizen? Sure. And I'm a fan of paper residence programs where you obtain residence. You don't necessarily have to spend a lot of time there. And then three, five, whatever years from now you apply for citizenship. Maybe you need to learn some of the language. Maybe you need to take a test on citizenship. Maybe you need to do whatever. And if you're willing to do that little bit of extra effort, and if you're willing to take the risk that maybe the rules change over those three or five years, uh, then hey, it's a cheaper way to do it. Nothing wrong with having a residence permit. I just don't think that in the Balkans, residence without physical presence is going to lead to citizenship. Uh, and certainly not without learning some kind of language in most cases. So anything else I would generally stay away from. I haven't seen every possible offer out there, but I really don't see any other way that if you're not getting citizenship by descent, you're not going through one of the citizenship by investment or similar programs, uh, or you're not really doing something exceptional, uh, then you're probably going to get residence. You can enjoy spending time there. Some of the countries have some relatively decent tax benefits that people don't really know about because the headline tax rates aren't super low, but there are tax benefits. Uh, other than that, that is the Balkan citizenship myth. Beware of, as we see countries right now in Eastern Europe, I've been saying it for a year, some of the most open places in the world, beware of people trying to sell you citizenship in those places where you can get that quickly, if not in one of the ways that I described. Residence, straightforward. Citizenship, not nearly so much. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.